All right, hi, hello, welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It is March the 4th, 2019. Uh, it's very nice to see you all. Uh, uh, if you are here, please put your name on the hat pack uh, in, under the attendees list because we like to know who is here. Um, I have pasted the link in the chat so you can do that. Uh, and if you haven't already, uh, and you've doing, been doing some work on, on JS Core IPFS stuff, uh, then put down your weekly update. Um, uh, this week, uh, I have decided that uh, if we have time, I would like to try something that the Go team do, which is this cross-team update. So if any, anyone is here from, actually this, there is people here from other teams who would like to share an update from their team, their working group, uh, in this working group, then um, please put down your names at the bottom of the list um, and your, your win and or update and we'll maybe get to you if we have time and you can read it out and tell us about what you've been doing. Um, so without further ado, let's get on with it. Um, weekly updates. So what do we do? We normally tell each other what we've been doing last week, uh, what we are blocked in, uh, blocked on, and what we're going to be doing this week. So my name's at the top. I will start. Um, uh, what have I been doing? Ah, uh, I've opened loads of PRs for CID v1 and base32 encoded um, CIDs by default. Um, uh, basically, there are a lot of PRs to update the CID dependency because it will be a major version when it gets released. So I'm just basically earmarking where the, the repos where I need to have an update uh, done. So I've opened them all, and it should be easy for me to, when the time comes, go around and swap over that dependent that GitHub uh, repo dependency to an actual version number when it gets released. So that's good. Um, so that took a while to open all of those. Um, and uh, what else have we been doing? So uh, I had a look again at the IPLD API refactor for Volker last week. Um, I did a couple of interviews uh, and a whole bunch of my time got, uh, got taken up with investigating there is a, well, there was a issue with the um, in Go bit swap for the preload nodes that JSIPFS uses and it meant that JSIPFS users, people who are creating uh, creating nodes were not able to actually uh, share content with each other. What was happening was that the, uh, the, the node was connecting to um, the preload nodes uh, and it looked like it was sending want lists uh, but never actually receiving the content from the node, even though the node definitely had that content. Um, and I think that has boiled down to the fact that uh, there was another node, another preload node spun up, uh, which used the same uh, peer ID as a, as, a, as a current one. So there was two preload nodes running, and I think the one that was spun up failed but never got taken down properly. So there was two preload nodes with the same peer ID and it was apparently messing everything up. So I think that's pretty much resolved now, which is super cool. Um, and then, so fun times, uh, fun times work that I've been doing uh, just yeah. basically over the weekend, to be honest. Um, I couldn't find, caveat, I'm really bad at Googling for stuff. Uh, I couldn't find a, uh, a module that would allow me to uh, map over some content, uh, as wow. like an iterables content uh, in parallel. Um, so like the situation is you've got like a, um, a uh, so some sort of stream you want to cons consume from or an iterator iterable that you want to consume from um, and that's coming in asynchronously every so often. You want to do some transform with the value that comes back. But if you do it in like a four away of loop, that's like doing it in serial. So you have to wait for that operation to complete before you start consuming the next chunk from the thing. Um, and actually, what you what in a lot of situations um, you can do is uh, that chunk where you're doing the transform. You could parallelize it and do a whole bunch of them at once, um, and then and then yeah. Anyway, so this module uh, it takes an iterable and a mapping function and will um, apply the mapping function to each item from the iterable. Uh, in parallel uh, and give you back an iterable that you can iterate over uh, and consume and it preserves the order so whilst all of the async stuff will be done in parallel um, the order is retained so um, that's kind of fun um, all right 
uh, I was blocked. I'm, st I'm blocked on the 0 0.5 release. Basically, there's this 100% CPU issue that Vashko has been investigating. I need to get back on actually looking into that and debugging it, helping him out at least if I can. Um, and I want to do some proper testing of the DHT that's in there now. Um, I also want to do some more work towards the uh, async iterators endeavor and, uh, and more work again towards the CIDV1 base32 encoded by default stuff. Like I think uh, from my perspective now, there is what's left to do is um, get all the tests working. Basically, all your tests with your built-in CIDs, um, the strings, uh, that's, that's kind of annoying for me especially if the, the content has, uh, is actually chunked into multiple bits of truck content, because when we change the version of the CID to be version one by default, the CID, the actual bytes stored, get a bit longer. There's a little bit more to store. Um, so the CID, uh, it's not just a case of um, converting the CID to base32 encoding, um, because the content has actually changed as well of the links of the node. So, um, yeah, that's kind of annoying. So here we go. It's going to be fun times, but so I need to do that. Um, but then there is the whole problem of like, um, uh, bits off in the DHT using CIDs and, uh, they should probably be, uh, using multi hashes and I need to look into and resolve that as well. So they are the two, two bits that need to be sorted. Um, that's me. Sorry for the long update. Uh, I haven't been here for two weeks, so I had lots to say. There you go. Um, next up is, uh, oh, wait, wait, questions. If any, I don't know how this works anymore. It's been two weeks. Uh, uh, Jacob, you've got a question. Yeah, for the, for the async iterator stuff, like you've created that module, and I know you've created a few other modules, um, and I think Hugo has created some stuff as well. Uh, I think it would be nice to have maybe in the async iterator issue itself, to have like a glossary of here are the modules that we have created to make this easier or modules that exist to make all this stuff easier so that we're not recreating them um, if we can't Google to find them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's a good idea. And um, I think that we should also be careful not to reinvent the wheel um, uh, and just make a lot of modules that already exist. And, and I think if we can, we should settle on like a, a kind of async iterator tool. Um, yeah, I, I like if people, I, if you, if people have suggestions, it would be cool to um, note them down in the um, async iterators awesome endeavor and we can maybe pick one. I looked at the bundle size for um, one of them, I think Hugo suggested, and it was like 30K G zipped. And like I looked at async, which is like 8K G zipped. And I was like, no, we can't use that one. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got some things to consider. But yeah, like um, for, for the modules that we've created that we don't think already exist, um, we should probably note them down there so that other people who are doing this work can um, have like a, uh, a place to pick and choose stuff that that, um, that they need for whatever they're doing. Um, cool. Yeah, good suggestion. Any other questions? All right, let's move on. Um, VMX Volker, would you like to share with us your update, please? Yes. Um, so I've been working on the IPLD selectors thing. Um, I've linked the current draft of the spec if you're interested. Also, comments are welcome if you yeah, have any ideas if it's cool or not. Um, there's also an implementation already in JavaScript, which will improve. It's still not like that good, but yeah, it, it, it kind of works. You can even add your own tests without doing JavaScript work. Um, I did. I think I also put it in the notes last week, some some tooling around, but it's also improved. So um, yeah, if you want to check it out. Then a lot of uh, moving the JavaScript projects to um, Travis CI. There's only two projects left I'm the maintainer of, and then I'm done. Um, and yeah, next, I'm not blocked. Not really, but I really want to get this JS IPLD PR merged. So there's, I, yeah, so hopefully Ellen will have time to have another view, and hopefully this time he doesn't find any new issues. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's hopefully ready to get merged. 
uh, because I really like to get it merged before we do all this other async array stuff, uh, await stuff, because else I feel that it gets delayed more and more. So um, yeah, and then hopefully start doing work on the IPLD formats um, API changes. And that's all from my side. Any question? Okay. Uh, and, and I want to thank Hugo for his time because, like, I bug him every day about some Travis issues, and he always replies. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, Hugo, uh, cool. You're the man. Um, all right. Next up is the uh, Alex, who is not attending, doing an interview. Uh, so we'll skip over him for now. Um, and you may read his, his updates at your leisure. Uh, next up is Jacob. Would you like to share with us your update? Yes, yeah, so most of what I did last week is triaging issues, which I will continue to do this week. Um, but there are some issues. I was working on the pull implex integration um, and was looking at IPFS interop, um, and that had some issues. And so I was checking against the latest version of uh, the latest IPFS release candidate, and the issue exists there. So it's not in pull implex itself, uh, which is good, but bad because there's an issue with the exchange files hitting heap issues. So I'm going to look into that. I'm probably going to write some basic benchmark tests for at least the switch to see if there's something going on in the switch that's causing the heap to uh, get out of control but because that will probably be a blocker for the next IPFS release. So that is going to be at the top of my list uh, for fo focusing on that this week. Um, an issue that I am blocked on somewhat is Travis doesn't seem to properly support IP6 tests. Uh, so I went to update the P2P TCP and that is having some failures and was worked looking at some additional IP6 tests. Um, but that was not working properly. So not a huge priority um, at the moment, um, but that will probably be an issue. So yeah. Um, other than that, uh, released a small update for JS multi-adder uh, to support to JSON so that we can stringify um, and parse from the config multi-adder. So. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Anybody have questions? I see no hands. You are free to go. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, Vashko, you're next. Would you like to send, give us your update? Sure. Uh, hello all. Uh, so uh, last week I mostly spent uh, almost every of my time in the DHT uh, diagnose and debug for the CPU usage on uh, GSFFS. Uh, Jacob also helped me. And basically uh, the problem is that uh, when, we, when we do the IPNS uh, republish, uh, a DHT put is triggered, which consequently uh, tries to get the closest peers and the, or when we are trying to get the closest peers, the things uh, were getting out of control because we basically crawled the entire network and uh, the query just uh, uh, blows up because it wasn't uh, finishing. Uh, and so uh, I've been uh, uh, discussing possible solutions uh, with Jacob and we ended up going with a temporary fix for, for closer peers. And uh, that uh, will hopefully unblock uh, uh, the release for now, because uh, we now can, can put without problems. Uh, and uh, I think that the biggest problem of uh, efficiency right now will be if uh, we do a DHT query. But uh, so, uh, we, we will need some more time to, to have a proper solution for that because uh, we will need to refactor uh, all the DHT query and, uh, and probably closer peers. And then we also had another problem, uh, which was if we could really get all the closer peers, then when we tried to do the DHT puts to all the closer peers, some of them uh, were not answering as well. 
because uh, I don't know, but I assume that uh, some of them don't have the DHT enabled or uh, they just don't uh, respond on time. Uh, and so we also need to, to, to improve the fault tolerance for, for that. I created a, a issue for discussing the solution, but for now, uh, what I did was the temporary fix for the closer peers. And I also did a pull request for GSAPFS, which basically um, upgrades the version of DHT and also disables the, the random walk, which I think is not a problem for now. Uh, and uh, we're disabling the random walk we, and with this fix, the CPU is fine. And from now, I think we can just uh, improve the things without uh, being uh, with SFS uh, like uh, all crashed. Then uh, I also uh, got a little progress in the DHT interrupt tests, not ready for PR yet, but I had some progress on that as well as the PubSub support for daemon and daemon client. I already have uh, the commits in my update, I, and I hope to get in a state for PR during this week. Then uh, other minor stuff that I did, like uh, migrate uh, repos to use Travis AI and reviews for, for Volker. And I also did a PR for fixing the DNS formats in EGS MAFMT. So uh, as I said this week, uh, I really wanted to, to get the DHT interrupt tests and the uh, PubSub support for the demons ready. Um, and I, I also want to do a new review for the, the gossip sub implementation. That was one of the things that I wanted to do last week, but uh, thanks to DHT, I couldn't manage to get that done. And uh, also DarkMC uh, made a couple of PRs for async migrations for IPNS and DHT, and is also waiting for my feedback. So I really want also to get the, those PRs reviewed this week. Is everything? Uh, any questions? I have a question. Uh, so the 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 fixes that you've done, or the temporary fixes that you've done to um, to help uh, fix up the CPU usage, what does that effectively mean um, for the like? What what have we lost by doing those? Like, so it sounds like. So we're disabling DHT discovery. Does that mean I'm not going to get lots and lots of peers appearing in my JS IPFS node that is not going to discover them? Uh, but content, like I'll still be able to get content from the network that I wasn't able to before. Um, so basically first, uh, when we do the, the DHT puts, uh, we'll not uh, put to as many peers at it would be uh, great to, to put because uh, what we are doing now is just do a, a, a first iteration of uh, closer peers and not like uh, getting the closer peers of the closer peers and the closer peers of the closer closer peers and so on. That's what uh, was happening before. And uh, basically what, I, what we discussed to fix that would probably uh, help to have the sync iterators because we, we could like iterate to, through the query and uh, abort the, the query at a certain time that we, for a metric, we would decide that we have enough peers while we now were just uh, crawling all the network. And uh, uh, regarding the, the discovery, uh, basically uh, each time we uh, interact with the DHT, we will uh, discover new peers uh, on our queries like puts and gets, and uh, we will be able with that to get more peers in the network, but a random walk uh, would be like uh, the step where we can get uh, like uh, five to 500 nodes. Now I tried with without random walk, we did disable it, and I got connected with, uh, uh, I think, 120 peers in, uh, in 30 minutes or something. OK, cool. All right, uh, and so uh, what's, the, uh, what's the kind of timeline for getting those features re-enabled and fixed? Do you, do you uh, like, will you be able to do it this quarter, do you think, or are you pushing it to next quarter? Um, I'm, I'm not really, really sure right now because 
uh, it will depend on the on the discussion that uh, uh, we have in the in that uh, issue, because I think for for this to be uh, really in a good shape, we we also should uh, have some effort in improving the the connection manager, because uh, if we if we were able to smartly uh, cl close connections, we would be able to have a more proper swarm connect to to other peers, which now is a problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Rashko? All right. Let's move on. It's Hugo. Hi guys. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen just a little bit. So I've been doing a lot of. Um, Bundle size stuff. Um, the HTTP client basically finished. We're just finishing up some little things to be able to merge it, hopefully. I also uh, did a review and a prototype for a IPFS companion uh, pull request about the first site uh, opt out for the redirects. Uh, you can see the prototype in the link there. Uh, but a bunch of dependencies uh, that I got to update to stream three. Um, we are almost um, almost uh, stream two free. Uh, from my research, the only um, package still pulling up or, or pulling in. Uh, readable stream two is the lip p crypto sec sec so whatever the repo is called. I'll have a look at it later. Um, did uh, some debugging on the lip p p CI problem. The guys from Travis finally respond to my uh, support tickets. Uh, basically. It's exactly as I told them, the, the way they set up their, their Windows VMs is wrong. I told them how they should set up the Windows VMs um, because I validated that the way I uh, explained to them works at least for us and is mostly what everyone does uh, when they want a Node.js and um, need to compile native stuff in, for Node.js do is basically installing uh, NPM package that, that uh, does all the things needed to uh, have that working on Windows. Um, let's see how they respond. This CI stuff might not be finished because of the all the, uh, in their acquisition of Travis. I don't know how much work they're gonna put on, 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 on Travis from now on, but let's see how, how that turns out. Um, indeed, um, a prioritization of the async traders pull requests, basically it's this stuff. Right now on the issue, we have all the repos with um, a P0, P1, P2 um, prioritization. Everything else has a P3 plus. Basically what I did, I only did like P0s, P1s, and P2s. Basically uh, P0 depends on nothing. Uh, at least our dependencies, not like streams or stuff. Uh, P1 depends only on P0s and P2s depend uh, on P1s and P0s. Everything else uh, is going to be on another wave. Uh, got, and that's why some of them have like P3 plus. It, that's because they either depend on P2, P2s or higher than that. Um, so we now have everything like prioritized so we can start uh, looking at the P0s merging doing a, a, a release with a, 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 at least a minor and go from there. 
to the P1s and P2s. Uh, one thing I noticed when doing this, this work is, um, let me give you an example. Um, where's the, um, something here. Yeah. When I'll basically look through the, um, the dependencies and a lot of our repos have like, okay, uh, dependencies, they mostly have only third party dependencies, at least the P0s, but then on the, dev, on the dev dependencies, they depend on higher, higher level um, repos. As we go through the, these repos and do the sync iterators pull requests, it would be a good thing to try to remove the higher level packages from the tests. Some, some of our repos are really hard to do, especially the lib P2P ones, because it's kind of really hard to not use higher level repos to do the tests. But others like this one, the multi-part, we shouldn't like need IPFS API or this is really all the HTTP client to do the tests. You should do the, the mocks and the features manually, uh, maybe go into the HTTP client uh, getting the output and just copy copy pasting it to the to the test, so we don't need to depend on higher level repos to do the tests. That would make the repos more modular and more like not uh, directly dependent on higher level repos, and that would be probably a good thing. And the test would be more atomic for the, the repo logic and not like only work with our stuff because if anyone wants to use multi-parts, uh, it will probably like break because it's made for HTTP client. So if you can, when you go through the, the PRs about this stuff, try to remove as much as you can from the dev depend dependencies. Um, for the rest, I really lost my um, iPad. Let me find it. Still here. Yeah, one other thing, I fixed something for Volker on the, uh, or else, everyone. Uh, Mocha is using, uh, is not using the same timeout setting uh, when run through Karma as it's, uh, as it's when run like standalone, as for no tests. So I did a pull request on Azure to, do, to use the same timeout that is like five seconds because right now Karma with Mocha only waits for two seconds. Um, lock on the lib P2P release for JSFFS, and I'll be trying to merge the HTTP client bundle size, finish the JSFFS bundle size, and start with uh, async iterators. And hopefully I can get to the proper log file mess that is bugging a lot of people right now um, because of at least two things, the locking itself and some uh, newer syntax that it's failing on Electron or, or React Native or whatever. We have a couple of issues about it. Yeah, that's it. Anyone has any questions? No, cool. Cool, thank you, Hugo. Uh, I cannot see any questions, so if we don't have any, then can you stop sharing your screen and we will continue on to uh, Zane. Cool. Um, so, um, found PRs for um, the JS data store uh, packages. Um, I found one for JS data store uh, core, and CI is failing for some reason. Um, Builds locally, uh, which is now 
allowing me to sort of test the packages that are further downstream. Um, so I hope to like clear the triad of uh, or trio of um, packages and get all those working this week. And uh, addressing PR comments as well. And um, thanks for this. Any questions for Zane? All right, uh, and that's the end of the list, but we have an Alex now. Would you like to share us your update, Alex? Sure, no problem. Uh, so last week I was on holiday, so I didn't really do very much. I was, I was looking to a, a perceived problem uh, with PubSub where it just seemed to stop working after a while. Uh, and after a bit of investigation, it turns out there's a magic number uh, for the sort of maximum size of a message that you can send. If you send a message to subscribers that is bigger than this message, then they will disconnect from you. Um, found that one out the hard way. Uh, it would be nice if it exploded instead, like on the, on like when you try and send a message that's bigger than that, uh, then it should say, hey, don't do that. Um, so that you can then not do that and then have things work. Anyway. So that was fun. Uh, found that Bashka is going to look into it uh, to see where where it, the actual thing is that that sets that limit. Because yeah, it's probably going to be something like the total size of the message rather than just the data field. Because um, you send things like to subscribers as well or something or the topics. So it could be a combination of like the topic name plus the data field or something like that. Anyway, that's what I'm looking into it. Uh, and it's going to be great. Uh, I'm not blocked in anything. Next week I am going to finish uh, those uh, uh, Envoy and RPFS blog posts because there was a whole ton of comments uh, about it. Uh, and now that I know what people want to see in it, now I can put it in it. Uh, and it's going to be good. Uh, when that's done, uh, as we were filling out our OKRs, uh, like progress for, for this quarter, I realized that I haven't really done anything because um, I've been working on all this package manager stuff uh, and all the OKRs that were agreed to at the beginning of the year have kind of fallen by the wayside somewhat. So I'm going to make that not be a thing uh, and, and get some of that stuff done. Uh, yeah, mostly probably the like trying to add the few missing features to IPFS that we don't have so that we can be feature complete. Uh, that would be me. I've gone all blurry. Oh, that's better. So I'm trying a new webcam. Volker thinks I look oversaturated, but I have just been on holiday. Uh, it might also be oversaturated. I like the soft focus. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's really clever. Can I to do that again? Yeah, there we go. Uh, cool. Uh, any questions? Cool. Uh, <clears throat> all right, thank you, Alex, and all people who have shared with us an update. If you weren't here at the start of the call, hey, we're over time, so if you want to leave, then you can just leave. Uh, but uh, we, if, if you weren't here at the start of the call, I wanted to try something new and um, do a cross teams update section. So if you are in a team and a different team, but would like to share with us a win or an update from your team, then we've got a section for that now. And we can all hear about each other's wins uh, and we can uh, like share information a bit more readily uh, and encourage people to do that. And I think that would be awesome. Um, so I said, if we had time, if you don't have anything else to do, then um, stick around. And uh, if Jim would like to share his, uh, his cross team update, that would be rad. Um, okay. Yeah, my, I'll just keep mine really short. Um, cool. So I'm working on PeerPad, and there's already a pinning service which just sort of like joins the collaboration with you when you're typing on notes together and it makes sure that it gets saved somewhere. Um, but it isn't really saving it anywhere permanent. Um, so I wanted to stuff it into IPLD, pin it to IPFS cluster, and uh, I want to use IPNS so that we can actually find the head of that thing. So when I reboot the pinner, it can like, I, I don't know if that's going to work, but um, so uh, I, I did a, a, a quick try to make it work on Thursday, and I failed. So I'm going to be spending some time this week trying to figure that out. And uh, there's a few other things I'm interested in, but I'll just leave it at that. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, any other ad lib updates that anyone would, else would like to give, or if anyone has any questions for Jim? 
No questions, but Elida would like to update. Go for it. Uh, well, while, while I'm here, so maybe very quickly <laughs> mention that uh, Hugo already mentioned that he created a very nice, in my opinion, uh, take on redoing the interface of our browser extension. So if anyone is interested, I extracted that idea into a separate thread when we can brainstorm how we can improve the current UI or how can we uh, design absolutely new one. And here is the Hugo's idea and feel free to post. I'll stop sharing and I'll paste link to the chat in case anyone is interested. All right, thank you, Lido. Uh, cool, that's in the chat. Um, and that's it for this week. Other notes, wait. Uh, Jacob's out next Monday. Uh, Volker is out next week. Um, be aware, don't message them. They're busy. Um, cool, all right, thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, thanks for sticking around if you did. Uh, sorry to take up more time than I am allocated. Uh, and we'll see you next week for another exciting round of what I done that this week. Uh, Zane, are you? Hey, hey, you got a question? You've muted. No, no, no. I was just waiting. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not waving. I'm drowning. Uh, okay. Um, all right. I'm gonna say bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. bye.